Hey everyone, I'm TK North, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot silky smooth day to night time lapses without needing any real extra equipment. So if you are unfamiliar with my channel, I'm TK North, photographer and filmmaker from Sydney, Australia. But today I'm actually here in Brisbane. I'm gonna walk you through my entire process shooting these holy grail time lapses. Of course, they're referred to holy grail because in the past they were very hard to shoot. With the technology now and the different processes you can use, they're actually really easy. And the easiest way to do that is using LR Time Lapse, which is a software which I have an affiliate link pop down in the description below. You don't have to use my affiliate link. I really think you should check out LR Time Lapse either way. It is going to improve your time lapses immensely. But anyway, let's jump in. I'll show you my entire process from start to finish. Let's jump in. For this method, you only really need a camera and a tripod. Here I'm using the Canon R5 with its inbuilt software intervalometer. A lot of cameras have this feature, but some you may need an external intervalometer plugged in to trigger your camera at a regular interval. Obviously the first step, you need to select a nice frame that will hopefully change over time. Make sure everything is in focus, then switch everything over to manual, including to manual focus. You don't want your camera searching focus during the time lapse. Then turn off image stabilization if you have it. Make sure you have full control over your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Set your camera to a fixed white balance. Next up, choose your interval. For sunset, I go anywhere between six to 12 seconds, depending on the conditions. This one I opted for eight seconds, but with no clouds around on this day, probably could have pushed it a little bit longer. Remember to process in this way. You'll also need to make sure you're shooting raw files, not JPEGs. So now I'm ready to start my sequence. Just make sure anything that may waste your battery on your camera is turned off. So I typically have image review turned off, but you can still quickly pause your time lapse at any stage just to check the photos and make sure they're looking good. Just remember to try to keep that pause as close to your interval as possible. This manual method that I'm using will require you to monitor your settings throughout and then ramp them as it gets darker with the changing light. We do this by watching the exposure meter. As it gets darker, this will obviously go down. The goal here is to simply adjust your exposure by a third on the meter when you see it dropping. You can do this by changing either your ISO or shutter speed, and I tend to keep my aperture the same. For me, I opt to adjust the shutter speed first, allowing you to get more motion blur as the scene gets darker, and then I like to ramp the ISO once I hit a maximum shutter speed that I want for the sequence. So a common rule of thumb is to stick to a shutter speed no more than half of your interval time. This still gives you a bit of leeway to check your images in between if required. So once you reach that chosen shutter speed limit, you can then start ramping your ISO. When monitoring your exposure meter, this does take a bit of practice, but typically I like my sequence to sit somewhere between zero and negative one, but you may need to play around with this depending on your camera. Typically, I only aim to ramp by a third whenever I change the settings throughout the sequence. If you find it's getting dark very quickly and you need to adjust it quite quickly, I would allow at least five shots in between before making any further adjustments. So basically keep ramping until it's dark, pushing your ISO as high as you need to. Depending on your interval, you might want to wait about 20 to 30 minutes after it gets dark before switching off your camera to ensure you have enough footage. Once you're happy, time to pack up and start editing. This is where the magic can happen in LR time-lapse ready to start editing. Once you've offloaded your files stored neatly in a folder on your hard drive, we're going to start by opening up LR time-lapse. I'll go through and explain what we're seeing here on screen in a sec, but first of all, locate your hard drive under volumes and click on the folder with all your files to let the sequence begin loading. Once that's finished fully loading, I can show you exactly what we're seeing here on the screen. Top left here, we have our visual preview of the sequence. Underneath, we have our folders where we just selected our folder. On the right here, you should have the visual workflow tab selected. We're going to work through each of these steps in a second. And underneath here, we can see a list of all our individual files and the settings for each. Example here with the interval, you can see for each of the files, it is eight seconds. Once that preview has fully loaded, you can watch it back. You can also notice this curve here representing the exposure throughout the sequence or the luminance. It will gradually get darker, it's moving down, but you can also see these little notches in the graph 
These are the points I changed the settings throughout when I was shooting. If I play that back, of course, you can see this is flickering wherever those changes occur. What we're going to essentially do now is totally level that out and make it nice and smooth. So now we'll work through each of these steps on the right. Step one is to pick a number of keyframes. These are the individual photos that we're going to edit a sec in Lightroom. So go ahead and click on that and LR Time Lapse will help you automatically select a number of keyframes based on how much the light's changing, but you can go in and change this, making it more or less if you want to. Step two, LR time lapse should recognize this as a holy grail sequence because of the change in the settings. Go ahead and click on that. We then need to adjust our curve by using these sliders, which will help level out this original graph. Here, essentially what you need to do is move this second curve as close to the middle line as possible. For more info on this, you can watch Gunther, the creator of this software, who has some really great tutorials on this as well. Here I've got the start and the end of that line pretty close to the middle line, so I'm pretty happy with that. Step three is simply hit save, and this will automatically save that metadata to all your files, so now we can edit those keyframes in Lightroom. You can see here, it will instruct you what to do next. You can simply drag this box over to your Lightroom library if you haven't opened the photos yet in Lightroom. If your folder is already in Lightroom, simply go to your library, select the entire sequence, then right click and come down to metadata, and you want to read metadata from files. This will load all the information you just saved in LR time lapse. Now your saved keyframe should be ready to edit. Head to the develop module and then use the filter to either select four stars or come across and select LR time lapse keyframes. Now we can see our keyframes. Here I have 13 images and all we need to do is edit each of these photos. Now to start editing, I always have lens correction and chromatic aberrations turned on. A couple of things to be careful with, you already have two radial filters here added in by LR Time Lapse. You can move these around and adjust as you like, but don't add any more than two. It can confuse the processing later on. You've also got four graduated filters, so don't delete or add any more there. Of course, you can adjust them and move them around a little bit, but keep them here stacked in these four positions. And then I tend to keep my edit a bit more on the subtle side to how I usually edit photos, mostly adjusting the basic adjustments to brighten up the image first, and then slightly shifting the color with the calibration and HSL tabs. I've then also gone in and just made some slight selective adjustments with one of the graduated filters and one of the radial filters. So once I'm reasonably happy with that first edit, I'll go in and copy that across to the other keyframes. To do this, select all the files and go up the top here and select sync keyframes. Do this rather than syncing down here on the bottom right or copying and pasting, as again, it can just throw out the processing later on. The final step for me is to go through and adjust the white balance for each of the individual photos and make any further adjustments to the later photos if required. Remember we shot on a fixed white balance. This just makes the process easier to correct at this stage. I tend to make gradual changes as it gets darker, shifting the tint slightly more to magenta and shifting to a cooler tone as it gets darker. During this stage where the sun is set and is quite bright, I may shift my temperature more to a warmer color as well. Once you're happy with everything, again, make sure you have all those keyframes selected. Go back and right click, go to metadata, but this time select save metadata to files. Next up, we're going to jump back over to LR Time Lapse, back with the sequence open. The next step is to click this reload button. That's going to reload your sequence. Once that's finished, simply click on the next step, which is auto transition. LR Time Lapse will then adjust all those files in between your keyframes to automatically transition between each of those photos. Next step, again, simply click on visual previews. This step can take a little bit of time to process because it's going to give us a nice visual preview of all those adjustments we just made in Lightroom. Should be looking a lot better now, but you will find that there might be still a little bit of a flicker. So you can see those little notches here on the curve. It's still not super smooth. So the very last step in LR time lapse is to come across and click on visual deflicker. Here you have different options. Smoothing, I'm going to select 10, which is a pretty good starting point. And you can also do a multi-pass deflicker, which is basically just gonna go through that sequence twice, deflickering by the same amount. So I'm just going to do two. 
hit apply again, let that process, you can then play it back once it's finished. Now you should have a nice smooth time lapse. Now all we need to do is render the sequence. Of course, rendering is going to be the slowest part of the process. This is where you're going to export all these files. Now you can do this two ways. If you're not using any video editing software and you just want to export your sequence, you can do this just using Lightroom and LR time lapse. You're going to go back into Lightroom. Again, select your entire sequence. And once again, that metadata that we just adjusted in LR time lapse, we're going to go down, read metadata from files again. Let that finish processing in Lightroom. All your files should be there ready to export. We're going to go down to export. You should find these presets under LR time lapse. I'm just going to select 6K and it's going to export my entire sequence. Here I do have over a thousand photos, so this can take a bit of time. Once that's finished though, it will automatically pop up back in LR time lapse and you can export your video. Depending on which version of LR time lapse you've paid for, you can either export it as an MP4, or if you're using the pro version, you can export this as a ProRes file, which is my preference. So here you've got a couple of different options. You can adjust the resolution, motion blur and sharpening, and then you can render your sequence. The other option here, which I tend to prefer doing, if you're using Adobe After Effects, once you've saved all that metadata in LR time lapse, it'll be linked to those files. You can actually just drag that entire folder into After Effects and render the sequence in this way as well, which I find is probably a little bit quicker for me, but depending on which programs you like to use, you can use either way. So that's the entire process from start to finish. So here we have the final edit looking nice and silky smooth with no flickering at all. With a little bit of practice, you'll get the hang of it in no time at all. If you did find this tutorial useful, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you check out LR Time Lapse. I'm TK North. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.